where what we're going to look at is some uh, approaches to programming using the if statement, arrays, and functions, etc. First, I start off with the idea of a brute force approach to an answer. Usually, it means the first solution you find. I also call it the naive approach. First is the idea of thoughtfulness in programming. Oops. So we need to recall the if statement. And there's the idea, this is our basic fun of the if statement. Some of you asked me last week, do I always need to put braces here? And the answer is no. If you only have one statement, it could be a while loop, another for loop, and that's with a semicolon, these braces are optional. It's usually, yes, it is, you're, you're up, it is usually better to leave these braces in. You have lots of room. Again, this is the, um, the logic. That is, we just went through syntax. There's syntax, the form of it, but what does this mean or what does it do? Um, this is what it, that's our semantics, our understanding in a flowchart. A test is conducted, we execute the statement of statements. If the test is false, we skip those statements. And this is a written description of the test. Most people prefer this, the flowchart. A picture is worth, in this case, like 30 words. Which is easier to understand? This picture or this, real quickly? Right. But they are all valid, these are both valid ways to understand the semantics. So our problem is to find a maximum of five integers. Oh, here's a possible solution. Somebody says, wait, let's use the if statement. I want another max. I have five numbers, A, B, C, D, and E. So if A is the max, A will have to be greater than B, greater than C, greater than D, greater than E. So our max is A. This is a lot of work, and it works for, what, five variables. Here's a smarter approach. Less work, smarter. It says, let's assume the maximum is A. Assume it. And then we check. Oh, maybe B is the maximum. If B is the maximum, I change it. If C is the maximum, I change it to C, and so on to the last value less error prone, fewer typos, cleaner logic. Look at this. Figuring this out is a nightmare. There could be a typo hidden in here. I might not see it. Here, it's very clean logic. And this would be a completed program at the five integers. And, uh, this goes with the keyboard. The first five numbers it sees, the first number will be A, the second number will be B, and so on. Here's the smarter piece of code. Notice the only thing that actually changes is the section in the middle that figures out which is the greatest, A, B, C, or D. Let's do something more complex now. This is important, this next part. Well, everything's important. We want to put five integers in high to low order. So here's our baseline code. We have A, B, C, D. And now I say I want to put them in a high-low order. So I need to figure out what logic, what code goes in the middle. Notice there's the input and the output. Here's running the code without any middle. Whatever numbers I put in are the numbers I get out in the same order, unchanged. But I need to change them. Our first thing is we have to figure out what is wanted. Now notice I put in the word struggle. Sometimes understanding what the client wants, what needs to be done in a problem is difficult. It can take hours of discussion. It's important to learn how to chat with people. Again, why? Because it might be an interview process to find out what the customer says they want, what is doable, and um, what they really need. It might not all coincide. So here are some deep thoughts. I figure out we need five. And I'm saying, okay, A, B, C, D, and E. And 
I don't know anything about these numbers. I just know they're called A, B, C, D, and E. I just know their names. I don't know where they are in memory. I don't know what's inside A. I don't know what's inside B. Somehow we need to test and arrange the values. Not A, B, C, D, and E, but what? What is inside A, B, C, D, and E. So I figure out an example. If somebody, uh, I want A to be greater than B, C, B greater than C, C greater than D, and D greater than E. What example? I'm right down here, this. So I do some test runs. I say, oh, so somebody gave me 0, 55, 90, 30, 79. My program would output this. That's one example. So now I think I have an understanding of what is wanted. Problem is C. But let's see right here, it's a difficult one. We're going to use a technique called the bubble sort. Think of each bubble in this diagram as a piece of data. Would a bigger piece of data flow to the top? And actually, it's supposed, this is supposed to be a champagne glass, a fluted champagne glass. If you ever seen one, what happens is when you pour soda in it, all of, instead of the, you ever have to drink, when you drink soda, you see the bubbles on the side of the glass? If it's a fluted champagne glass and you pour the soda in, the bubbles don't stick to the side. They go up the middle and they tickle your nose when you drink it. Because all the bubbles are just, that's, anyway, never mind. That's why they get the, the term bubble sort. So what it is, is I have a bunch of um, variables, A, B, C, D, and E. And if you take a look at the yellow diagram, the, the thing highlighted, you'll see the first thing I say is A, less than B. That means they're out of order. The value of A is smaller than B, so I swap them. So now A and B are different. A now has the biggest value than B. Then I move down and I look at B. I say, is B smaller than C? Then that's in the wrong spot. Swap them. Then I go look at C. Is C smaller than D? If so, swap C. And I repeat the last time with D. Is D smaller than E? Then D is in the wrong spot. The larger number is supposed to be on top. So if I see a smaller number, A, B, C, D, I swap it. Then I repeat the process and I do it again. And then I repeat it and do it a third time. And I repeat it a fourth time. After I repeat this thing four times. All the numbers, their values, should be in order, high to low. After I repeat this logic, what you need to do is go home and figure out what the heck is happening here. So I'll help you with that in a minute. Yes? Would it be easier to use a loop so because you're doing it four times? Well, we're studying it. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. This would be great to put in a loop, and I wish I had thought of that exactly so the next one would, would follow. You did. And, and you did. <laughs> kinda, I kind of did, but not as beautiful as you're thinking. That would have been smart. I didn't do that, do this four times. I actually went to the answer. First, I take that code, and I put it in the middle, right there. There's my input, there's my passes, there's my output. Again, this is my input from before, there's my output. And now, I have these passes, and if you take a look, 0, 55, 90, 30, and 79, 90, 79, 55, 30, 0. It works, they're sorted, yay! However, there is some redundancy in here, we're repeating something, and we're not very efficient. What if we did this? I said, okay, we, we step through it past one. We go from top to bottom. So we moved everything around once. But D might be, maybe D is the biggest number. But I only moved D into one position. Excuse me, E. If E is the largest number, E is now where D is. But E, excuse me, E needs to go to the top, its value. So I pass again, but it turns out the smallest number will end up down at E, so I don't have to check the last one. So I remove one pass. Notice it's only it goes four, three. Once I pass on the third pass, I don't need the bottom two. The bottom two are fine. On the last pass, I just need to check the top. 
to bring the last number in line. So everything will be in order, and this is more efficient code. Bless you. So here I have my input, and I have my output, and now my code is cleaner, but not as clean as it could be. Notice I put comments in here. Removed unnecessary testing. Removed unnecessary, removed unnecessary testing. Now I go to the next one. This is what I'm looking for, ultimately, are patterns. There's A, B, C, D, and E. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at two at a time. Look at A and B. Should I swap them? Then I move the next pass to the next line. Should B and C be swapped? Should C and D be swapped? Should D and E be swapped? And then I repeat this four times. This technique is actually called the bubble sort. Now notice A, B, C, D, and E look like an array, don't they? Item 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it's item 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's a pattern in there. So instead of using unique names that I have to type A, B, C, D, why don't I use an array? So I have this constant integer n equals 5, and I'm going to call the array data. i got to give it a name, right? Data is a nice name. Data. Hold. That should be hold out numbers, not out. That's it. Is it a number where? Oh, I got all this done typo too. It's all backwards. I just typed this. All right. Um, C in is supposed to go in. The arrows here go the other way. It should be shifting in, not out. What happened was I did a cut and paste from C out. And I shouldn't have done that. But I'll fix it in a minute. So note the typo. I'll make sure my mark is there. This, goes, this arrow should go the other way. So something may be better if we use an array with an index. So here, and this is correct, I'm not going to use A, B, C, D, and E. I'm going to use an array. And I'll say, enter five integers, just like before. But instead of saying C in A, B, C, D, E, or C in A is zero, I'm going to say, go to the keyboard. It's actually standard input, but a standard input, which is CN and it is a keyboard. Whatever person typed in, put it in data index item zero. Notice it starts at what? Zero goes all the way up to n minus one. Notice it doesn't hit n. It says less than n. So it's zero, one, two, three, four. So this will be data zero, data one, data two, data three, data four. So I store each data item. Now here are my passes. Notice I say pass equals zero, and I'm going to pass around four times. What am I going to do four times? What I'm going to do four times, take a look very carefully at the bottom yellow, it's kind of blurry, but data index is like A. Is A less than index plus one? What came after A? B. So this is asking, is A less than B? If A is less than B, then swap A and B. Then it goes down one more, and now it does B. Is, A, is B less than C? If so, swap. What you have to do in your mind is see that these things are going to be A, B, C, D, and E. You take out a piece of paper, you write, this will help you on a test too. All my exams are written tests and a blue book. So I would say it is your advantage to jot this stuff down on paper and try to your own find your own style, your own idiom to work through what's happening. Scribble. When I'm done, I want to um, um, print out all the numbers. I have a little glitch here to be fixed with that comma, it says print out 
data zero, which is A. Data one is B. So it prints out A, B, C, D, and E. Here's the program completed here. And notice the, um, it looks exactly like the first couple of programs. You cannot tell that in the background, you, you cannot tell that in the background a different program is running. You can only see the effect. Oops. We're an advanced C++ course, so we have to go a little past this. Notice I have a bullet here. Some of the code that I'm about to write, you have to tell the compiler that you're using C++ in version 11 or 14 or 17, but not version 98. I don't think it'll work. What I'm going to do now, since we're so advanced, is I'm going to create a bunch of prototypes. Take a look at those um, functions. They're APIs. That's an important vocabulary word. Now, unfortunately, my markers, ah, there they are. Brand new markers. This will, of course, not appear on the slides. So what I'm going to do is pause this, resume. All right, this is now, it, with those three tools, this is our main program. Look at the beauty of that program. The simplicity, the elegance, the clarity. Enjoy it, absorb it. You don't really get programs that easy all the time. They get ugly pretty fast. But the idea is, and look at the yellow highlighting, get data. There's my message, enter five integers. There's my data, there's how much data I have. This thing will go out and show the person, enter five integers, tell them what to do, and it gets the data. Next one, bubble sort. There's the, there's the array right here. It goes in. And it comes back out, this thing is now sorted. Display. Your sorted numbers, high and low, I even skip a line in there to make it look fancy. Notice, skip a line inside my message. I give it the data and the size of the data. And this is what it does. It looks exactly like. So we see this is what you and I see, but this is the program that's actually running. If you look at all these slides that they're on Blackboard for you, you'll see that when you have a display, you really don't know what's under the hood. But this is your job, is in here, is really to design a system under the hood that's beautifully done, that is readable, modif that can be modified by future programmers and generations. Let's take a look now at the details. Here is get data. Now, when you look at these things, you see char star MSG. That's, that's my way of abbreviating the word message. MSG, it's very common, MSG. Integer D, open brace, close, excuse me, bracket, close bracket. This is a way of indicating I have an array. It says D is not just an integer, it's a what? It's an array. So these are three variables, MSG, D, and N. They are three variables that somebody gives get data. They're coming in from the top. The main program is actually giving this thing information. So these things, that the data is coming in from the main program. So now it just says, this code here, get the data is just a for loop that we looked at before. Whatever the person types in, 
fill up one variable at a time, from d0 dot 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 to dn minus 1. So in our case, we go from 0 to 4. 0 to 4 is 5 variables. Because you have to count 0, it's a number. Now I put this added bonus in there. It's a safety feature. It says, what if the person put in minus 6? Can I get data from minus 6 variables? What do you think? No. Give me minus six. No. So it says, if you give me a number less than 1, 0. If you say give me 0, I can't get anything. Why am I going to bother? And if you give me 0 here, that means there's no, there's no place to put the data. So if you don't really ask me for data, and if you don't give me any place to put the data, I'm just coming back. See the return? If there is, you, want, you, don't, you don't ask me to get data, you don't, or, this is the word or, or you don't give me any place to put it, I'm not doing that, not. I'm just returning. So in your notes, if you don't want to write everything, which I probably wouldn't, I would write this one line right here in my notes, and I put down um, what these two things are doing, and that the concept is safety. I don't want my program to run and do something and crash. If somebody makes a mistake using one of my tools, it's like a guard on a power drill. So you don't cut your fingers off. Could still do something crazy, but it's safety. You can delete this line. I, I have it all. I put. I typed it all in for you. It's uploaded. You can delete this line. The program still works, but it has no safety net. If somebody puts in the number zero from the main, this thing will still try and run. If you put in, if you forget to give it a data array. It'll still try and run. Who knows what'll happen? Question? Um, what slight number is this? Pardon me? What slight number is this? Uh, 33. It's down. It's, you can't see this right here. Slide 33. I mean, no, I'm sorry. The lecture and chapter. Oh, later. You mean the whole set? Yeah, this one. Yeah, I'll show it to you. We'll get to that at the end. Here's our bubble sort algorithm again. Notice this is just the code, these three lines of code. These are the three lines of code. I just pulled them right out of the program. Ha! Ah! And the only thing I did was I changed it from the word data to D, which I didn't have to do. But I kind of like my code being not wordy. So I have D here, there's N, there's the N, and there's D. And notice this is when A is less than B, swap A and B. When B is less than D, swap etc. etc. And here I bothered to put in a comment that it's a safety test. And notice it says high low sort, any integer array. Any, that's a powerful word, any. Any integer array. So you could use this idea anytime someone gives you integers, thousands of them. Say, so, oh, I have thousands of integers. How am I going to sort them? There. Does this become a thousand and that becomes your array that's filled with data? Here's how to display it with a message. And notice the first thing I do in this piece of code is, is I display the message. Whatever the person wants, I'll do it. I'll say it. But if they don't give me anything good to display, they forget to give me valid data, or tell me the size of it, I won't do anything because I don't want to crash. Notice also I put the word const, C-O-N-S-T. That means the programmer down here in the future, if they try to set DI equal to 4, or di equal to zero, if they try to change d, 
inside here, this thing says, no, 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 no. You said this array is constant. You can look at it, you can print it out, you can use it in a calculation, but you can't what? Exactly. It's just for safety. You can't change it. However, we are really advanced. We're advanced C++. We're going to go one more step. C++ comes with a set of templates, boxes, that do jobs for us kind of already. There's a template called sort, and you give it three, three items. Parameter 1, parameter 2, parameter 3. There's another one called greater, less, begin, and end. They're very easy to use with integers. Very easy. They will sort, it will sort things for you. To use them, you have to include the library called algorithm. It has everything in it, including sort. They're all there. I no longer need the bubble sort. I can now use the STL that says, and this code does work, no typos here, because I ran it. Start at the beginning of my data, go to the end of my data, and put it in the order of greater than. And this weird syntax, notice this weird syntax. You see that weird, the greater than, less than sign? That's for templates. Java does the same thing. When you take 190, if you get to templates, you will do the same thing in Java. And it says, I'm going to work with integers, and I'll put it in high to low order. That's all is the same. Tell me where to start, where to end. And this will put it in high low order. That means you don't have to write the bubble sort. You don't even have to use it. This sort, I forget which sort it is, but it's a lot faster than the bubble sort. It's select. It's select. Should sort that it's n log n. The bubble sort has two for loops in it, for loop and a for loop. This goes around n times, this one goes around n times. So all together, it's, they say it's n squared. Don't worry about the n minus 1. The, the fact is it's like n squared. So that's how many times it loops. This sort is another sorting routine that the time it sorts is roughly equal to n log n. So it's not n squared, it's n times the log of n. The log of n is smaller than what? n. So it's less, it's, it's faster than the bubble sort. We don't have to even know all of that. What we have to know, we learn by typing this stuff in until you turn green. The code. You type this in, and eventually you get used to looking at it. And in the real world, if you're a C programmer, you'll memorize a lot of them. Can you memorize all of them? I don't know. There are hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Usually, what happens is you see one, you forget about it, and a year or two later, you think you need it. What do you do? You look it up. Did you? Yeah. Just go and you look it up, see how to use it again, and figure out, do you need it? And? The display is also Pardon me? The display. Display? No, the display is not a template. Um, excuse me a second. 